right, we are ready to go for another week in NASCAR on Prime Sports Network and Mystery Caution. CJ Verdun joining me, and he's going to be here. I'm stuck with him. You're stuck with him. That's it. <laughs> this was just one week. How's it going, CJ? It's going well. I hate to break it to everybody that I'm back again. Permanently. Yeah. <laughs> Permanently for now. So. You got it. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the updated futures for NASCAR. Let's see what we got here. Let's post them up there. All right, so uh, let's see. William Byron continues to be the leader at this point in time uh, at uh, four to one. Uh, Larson's five. Well, hold on one second. Make this easier so you can even see what I see. Where is it? There it is. Uh, and then we have uh, Hamlin at six, Bell at seven, uh, Truex at eight, Blaney still at ten, Elliot is a generous twelve, and so forth. A couple of weeks ago, I gave out Gibbs at twenty-two to one, and he's now down to sixteen. I still think Bowman is a pretty good choice with the start that he's gotten off to at thirty. Uh, Busher is still also a pretty interesting choice at 22. Maybe even Kozlowski and Kyle Busch, because th th the thing is, and, and you know, we have someone like Kyle Busch at 18 to one CJ, and you know that most of his struggles just came on the short package. Well, that's just one package. So I'm willing to give him uh, a little bit more time. And how many times have we seen this anyway, where it's, it's how you finish, not how you start. 100% true. And other names on there that are actually pretty surprising. You, you scrolled past it, but Joey Logano, I think, was 14. Uh, Tyler Reddick at 16. I mean, either of those just, you know, Reddick is fast. He's, he's just got to get some consistency. Yes. Like, had bad luck. He's already over his slump, so he's going to win a race shortly here. And you can't put it past somebody like Joey Logano. <clears throat> to make it all to all the way to the final four uh but yep. yeah bush bush as well he's another one but uh, i hesitate a little bit with bush like i think from a futures perspective really good but you don't want to go with him probably this week at texas despite the fact that he's won several times there at least i don't yeah and the reason why is i just think richard childress racing right now they're in a bit of a hole they've got some things that they need to work through but by the time we get to october september uh late august uh, of, of this year we're going to see a completely different uh, landscape than we have right now yeah you think kyle because uh, i mean the whole idea f from making the switch I know Chevy seems to be the, the faster car. I get that. But still, uh, Kyle's been having a little bit more trouble, it seems, mm -hmm. in Chevy than he had a Toyota. So they've, they've missed on the setup. So I wonder how much of that is Chevy versus how much is just a new team. Um, he doesn't have the length of experience with Richard Childress racing. Obviously, somebody like Kyle Busch knows what he wants in his car. He can race pretty much and win in almost anything. So from a setup perspective, he can he can get there. So I don't I don't know how much to place on him being a new car in Chevy versus how much Richard Childress just as an organization, because if you look at Austin Dillon as well, Dillon has done nothing this season. I think his best finish is not even in the top 15. Oh, it's so. awful. Yeah, it's just awful. So uh, they've they've made pit crew changes. They've done a ton of stuff to try to shake things up for both of these cars. Dylan, 31st in points right now, coming out of Martinsville. And his top finish, not even in the top 20 in the last five, his best finish so far was 16th at Las Vegas. So, again, I, th I think you got to just give Richard Childress Racing a couple of weeks to get things sorted out. The leading indicator of when they've got stuff sorted out is going to be Kyle Busch moving back up to the front, though. All right. So that's what's going on with the futures in uh, the NASCAR Cup Series. And uh, by the way, how did everything work out for F1 last week? Exactly as predicted. We had a Max Verstappen day. No. Uh, Sergio Perez. <laughs> yeah, Sergio Perez came, coming up with a big second place as well. They started first and second and finished first and second. Carlos Sainz uh, moved up to third, took that last place on the podium for Ferrari. Um, no surprising there. He's He's been beating Leclerc so far this season, aside from the week that he had the appendicitis. Uh, so Carlos Sainz really making a push. It's a contract year for him. So good for him getting another podium a week after, or I guess a race after uh, going out and winning. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look 
at the odds for this week's race, the NASCAR Cup Series race in Texas. This is about as uh, bad as a racetrack as there is in the NASCAR <laughs> Series. Uh, Larson is the heavy favorite, as you can see. There's Reddick at 6-1. to one. Like and, I said. Yeah. Hamlin also. Uh, Byron is off to a great start with three wins. Uh, let's see. Bell, uh, he's getting a, a generous 12. Elliott, 14. Uh, let's see. There's Kyle and Logano. Bowman. Uh, busher has been terrible here. Uh, Kozlowski is getting a generous. There's Eric Jones, who could be a good long shot pick this week. And the rest. Jimmy Johnson's racing this week? Uh, let me check. I didn't know if he was, but he Looks very like well. It. But he's got a limited schedule. I wasn't sure after Daytona exactly what the rest of his was, but yeah, yeah. he's in. Racing. How was he picking this race for? But it's up to him. <laughs> he can. Like if you follow him on Instagram and Twitter, you'd see that he's in Japan right now. So yeah, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have some jet lag coming back to Texas. Okay, so Texas Motor Speedway, a 1.5 mile tri oval. Now this is the one with uh, this is one of the tracks with higher banking. So just keep that in mind. More similar to Charlotte. Uh, so if you do want, you, you can compare also, you can throw in the other 1.5 mile tracks, Kansas and Las Vegas, but the only one we've had so far this season has been Las Vegas. So, but again, not the higher banking kind. So it's just up to you how much you want to use that in your handicapping. Um, there have been 43 races at Texas. So taking a look at the key trends, Chevy's won three straight and four to five. Ford has not won, uh, in the last five. And a matter of fact, no current Ford driver has won at Texas since Joey Logano did in 2014. So keep that in mind. There have been seven different race winners in the last seven. Uh, eight of the last ten winners started in the top ten. The others were 18th and 21st. And all time, we have seen some uh, some far back winners here we uh, for 30 for only 43 races we we've, we've seen 21st 24th 29th 30th twice and 31st so even though eight of the last 10 started in the top 10 is important this is is another race tr another race where I'm not going to put it over emphasis uh on qualifying but we do know it's important for the simple reason that it's very hard to pass here yeah, typically speaking, without anything untoward thrown into the mix, you're going to want somebody that starts inside the top 10, if not the top five. Generally speaking, that's how the trends at this track goes. That's generally speaking how the trend goes at, at Charlotte as well. Uh, if you get a fast car here and you're able to start really quick and break away from the rest of the field and you've got that track position, that clean air and the way that the, this car in particular is sensitive to aerodynamics makes it very well, not very, makes it easier to pull ahead from the rest of the pack. And quite honestly, you could see a large chunk of the field end up getting lapped too. If you reference back to last season, one of the times where somebody did come from outside of the top 10 to win, it was because of a late caution. Byron only led the last six laps and ended up winning. Um, he started 18th and yeah, he worked his way forward, uh, but those six laps were all that he ended up leading that entire day. Uh, so a late restart with six laps to go, ended up giving Byron the win. Um, that's about the only way you can come from outside of the top 10 and win here at Texas. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of thing that makes it a boring racetrack. Um, and I mean, all you had to do is watch the all-star race uh, to figure that out and why that was just a, well, let's not do that again kind of deal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, but it is what it is. And, uh, Let's try to get inside these drivers now and find out if we can give you some good ones uh, before, well before uh, qualifying on Saturday. Okay. We only come here once a year now, so. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes. We're all happy about that. All right. Uh, let's start with Kyle Larson, uh, who's the uh, the leader at 4-1. to one. And look, it, f I, I don't think that he's so much better than some of these other drivers for me to waste my money at this point in time at four to one. I just, that's way too low for me. Uh, I, I know that um, he's, of course, he's won here before. And, and, and keep this in mind, he led from the pole back in 21, um, 256 of 334 laps. So he dominated that race. But 
if, if he's been just very inconsistent here, and that's the problem. If you look at his last eight races alone, he's had finishes of first, fifth, ninth, twelfth, along with thirty first, thirty sixth, thirty seventh, and thirty ninth. That's just way too much inconsistency for me to be putting a big money on somebody who's only four to one. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, it's pretty interesting to see Larson um, getting this price. I, I think it's primarily due to the fact that he's got three top fives in the last four races, more so than what specifically he's done at Texas. Because like you said, if you look at the surface of it, he led 99 laps last year before getting into a crash and finishing the 31st, 19 the year before he started ninth and finished ninth that year. And the year before that was the 256 lap dominator that he won from pole. So yeah, it, it's by far a sure thing from him coming out to be the favorite and going out to win, you know, this weekend, uh, exactly as you said, the, the inconsistency, but based on the fact that a second last week at Martinsville, a third at Richmond, then two weeks prior to that, a fifth at Bristol, uh, he's certainly on the swing of momentum. And I think that's where that optimism is coming from in that price point. But I'd like to see him a little bit lower. I agree with you. Yeah, I think he's clearly one of the favorites. He should be. I just can't take anybody at four to one. And he's a favorite by two points, which mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't see that. Okay. Uh, now, the two right behind him are Reddick and Hamlin. And uh, Reddick, uh, taking a look at, at Reddick. So he's he, this is a good track for Reddick. Um, it's not like he's dominated here, but he has a win. He has a couple of top fives overall. And he was runner-up here, actually, in his very first appearance, which was a pretty nice trick. Uh, his last two races, he led 36 and won the race, leading 70 laps. That was a couple of years ago. He has also three top fives in six Xfinity Series races with two runner-ups and a win. So this is a good track for Reddick. But now we're it's it's just like we're cutting his odds generally in half and even more than half of what he normally is on a weekly basis. And again, I, I like him, but I don't like him at six to one. I, I like him at ten to one right now, eight to one the lowest. I just you know, I gotta pump the brakes on a Tuesday at six to one. <laughs> yeah, for Reddick too. Um yeah, the the consistency I think so far that for isn't there for me yeah he's got speed yeah he's pretty good at at texas does some good things like you said first time out gets a second place finish from i think he started 24th if i'm not mistaken that time in the playoff standings no less right now uh but just from week to week like three top tens in the last five but at bristol he was 30th and then the week before that uh at phoenix he was 10th so he's got some tracks that he's good at I, i think he'll be fast here in phoenix but i don't know why Again, for a little bump up higher in the odds, you wouldn't go with somebody like Hamlin, who's got one, two, three uh, finishes uh, of four finishes of 11th or better from the last um, uh, four here at Texas for Denny Hamlin. Plus, he's a a four time winner uh, or three time winner, excuse me. So uh, this track with somebody like Hamlin, who's on the roll that he's on right now with the speed that he's got, regardless of where Hamlin starts on Sunday, I think he's going to find his way to the front. He's been able to do that every single week so far this season. Whereas Reddick, who's a little bit more expensive in the odds, doesn't have that same kind of momentum on his side right now going into Texas. So I would go with Hamlin of the two, certainly. Yeah, when I'm looking at Hamlin, I think the thing that I would be, uh, and again, I'm not comparing the two of them, just generally, if I'm comparing the rest of the field, we know he has a very good history here. Um, But let's just keep this in mind with Hamlin, um, and I'm not talking about how he's racing this year, because obviously that's the main reason why, in my opinion, that you'd want to go with him. How, How the start he's off to, and historically, he's been good here with three wins. Keep in mind... um. He led 43 total laps when he swept this racetrack in 2010 total. And uh, he only has 292 laps led ever at this track in 33 races. Matter of fact, he's led 15 laps total in his last seven appearances at Texas, which is one top five. Two top fives in his last nine, but one of those was a win in 2019. Um and then the other thing I'd be a little bit concerned with with Hamlin, again, with the field, is just that the he got hot on the short tracks. Um, even though 
Uh, and again, you can compare Phoenix to a short track in generally because it's very similar flat uh, to um, Richmond. Um, but uh, he's still Denny Hamlin. And I definitely feel a lot more comfortable with Denny Hamlin, as you said, at six to one than I would at Tyler Reddick at six to one. <laughs> Even though um, I think there are warts too with Denny Hamlin at six to one generally. So that's why at this point, I, I, I me personally, I wouldn't take any of these drivers on a Tuesday. Um, but Hamlin definitely the best because he's getting the best odds. So, all right, and then and then you got Byron at seven to one, and with Byron. And then Blaney at eight to one. The thing with Byron is, first of all, he's defending champ, and he won last week. That's a lot to ask to win two straight at a track, two straight on the year, and a fourth on the year. It's a lot to ask at seven to one. Um, I'd like ten to one if I could get it, but seven to one. Um, I think you should get an extra couple of bonus points just for how difficult it's going to be to accomplish that for Byron, but they're not going to give it to us. Look, we understand why that's the case because he's off to a great start. He's driving a Chevy. Um, keep it, and, and his last three races, first, seventh, and second. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot to like about what Byron's doing right now. I, I tell you the truth, I mean, at this point, just talking about these four drivers, I'd probably go with Byron if I was just choosing these four drivers yeah i mean certainly for the price you're almost getting twice your money for going him over larson but yeah like you said the chances of not only winning back-to-back -back races at the track from season to season but then winning back-to-back -back as well week to week last week after martinsville it was such a dominant performance i wonder if there's going to be any kind of hangover on the the Hendrick cars and, 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 you know, the alternative that you have in this grouping, you, you look at Larson and you're getting a payout of half as much for you know twice the risk to go with, to go with Larson over Byron. But yeah, I, I think it, for me, probably, probably would go with Byron just because of the momentum that he's got. But I do think Hamlin of that bunch, uh, actually, you know what, maybe even Reddick, but um, Hamlin certainly from a notch higher uh, as we talked about with Reddick, Hamlin would probably be the one that I would end up going with, to be it, honest with you. You know, this, this is interesting because Byron is getting almost twice the, the, the money, and yet they've both raced here and have one win each. Hmm. Uh, by the way, Larson's career average here is 18th. It's 18.6. We told you about his inconsistency. Byron has three wins on the year. He's defending champ, and he's almost getting twice as much as Larson. To me, that's just that's name recognition only. That's all it can be. It can't be anything more than that. Yeah, I you know the the money is probably just going to the fact that Larson again has been close. If if you're a casual watcher, you're not watching every single race. You're tuning in. You're flipping to something else. Larson's name up there the past couple of weeks has been at the front each of those weeks. I think that's really what's driving it. Um, yeah, so exactly as you said, name recognition because he's been running at the front but hasn't been able to make that break through the victory lane over the past couple of weeks, I think, is more behind the momentum. All right. Uh, next up is Blaney. And I think Blaney, now his odds went down a little bit. It's at 8-1 to one now. I don't want to see it go down much further than that um, because I think the odds are really good for Blaney here. Based, and look, I know he's driving a Ford, but just I, I, the fact that he hasn't won yet in the Cup Series leads me to believe that this week will be a good week to take him because he hasn't won here yet. Because if you look at it, eight top tens out of 15, four of those top fives. He's led over 432 laps here in 15 races. I just talk, I just mentioned the fact that Hamlin has 292 in 33 races. Uh, Blaney, in his last 10 races at Texas, has an average of 10.7, and that includes a crash and an overheating issue during that time span. So that's crazy. Um, throw in the fact that in the Xfinity series, six top 10s, six appearances, five top fives overall, three runner-ups, and a win. Come on. I mean, the kid is completely overdue for a win here, and I'm getting 8-1. to one. Again, a couple of days ago, it was 10. So, I, I yes, I would take Blaney today because uh, the odds might continue to fall, especially if he has a good qualifying effort. 
Before uh, I actually looked at the trends of Texas, to be honest with you, I had it stuck in my mind that the Fords and specifically the Penske Fords tended to be pretty good at this track. So I was surprised that the last current Ford driver winner, I wasn't surprised it was Logano, but I was surprised at how far back it went. If you look at Planey, he was fourth in 2022, sixth in 2021, fourth in 2020, uh, seventh in 2020 in the spring, eighth in 2019. That's five straight top tens, two of which were top fives. And and he led a hundred and almost 200 laps in, in that span alone. And just those five races ended up crashing out last year. Didn't have a great qualifying effort, but if he qualifies inside the top 15, I completely agree with you. I think, um, I, I think Blaney is one to take, assuming he starts inside of those first seven rows or so. Uh, true Rex is 10 to one. Um, and if you take a look at, uh, at uh, Martin, who did not have a good week last week, which is very surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure exactly what happened there, but uh, maybe a carryover from the week before. Um, the thing I'm a little bit concerned with is two things, which is why I can't take him this week. There's just no, there's no way, no reason I see to take him this week. And first of all, last week, uh, th- everything was for him, and he still wasn't able to put it together. But uh, he has five top fives in 34 appearances. He does have, he has led 689 laps. That's good. But in the new car, he's finished 17th and 31st. And in his last three races here, he's crashed twice with a 17th. Yeah, I just, especially at 10 to 1. I mean, give me 16 to 1, maybe. Then I'll think about it after qualifying. But yeah, no way would I even come close to Martin Truex Jr. at 10 to 1 on Tuesday. I don't know what track you're ever going to get Martin Truex at 16 to 1. But. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, so- Road course, COA. Maybe a road course. Yeah, but... Daytona? Yeah. (laughs) Precisely. Um, Yeah, you know, talking about Blaney just before, he's the exact opposite. Four out of the last five were not even top 15s at this track. And yeah, he had a second place finish and led uh, 53 laps. But like you said, that was in the old car in the fall of 2020. Um, I just don't see the the trends there. I think from a fantasy perspective, he's probably going to be a decent top 15, top 10 kind of guy, assuming no mistakes happen and, and no major issues like they encountered last week, which was just an off week, which exactly that was so super strange after the week prior, how strong he was at Richmond to just have nothing the entire weekend at Martinsville for him was, was very surprising. So yeah, the recent uh, Texas trends in particular, plus the fact that they missed out last weekend, um, Truex is definitely not somebody I would go with this weekend. And he qualified and practiced well last week too. It it just didn't look like there was any reason uh, for whatever happened last week to happen. Okay. Uh, You got Christopher Bell at 12 to one. Now we start getting to the point where, all right, well, do we have some bargains? And yes, I believe we do here with Christopher Bell. Um, And that's because he has three top fives and five appearances. Uh, uh, He's an average finish of 13th. And then throw in the fact that uh, in the Xfinity series, three top fives out of five, runner up in a win, throw in two poles, almost 300 laps led. He also has a truck win on this track in 2017. So he's, is another one of these drivers that looks like he's due for a cup win here, and I'm getting 12 to 1. So right now, the the drivers I like earlier in the week, based on the odds, uh, Blaney and now Bell. Yeah, third, third, 34th, and fourth in his last four Texas starts. Plus, he's been extremely fast so far this season. Uh, I think from a bargain standpoint, Bell is one that you probably have to take this week. Okay, Chastain is uh, 14 to 1, and so is Chase Elliott. Uh, and, I, and I like them both, again, because of the odds. I like Elliot better. I like the fact that Elliot seems like he's getting a little bit closer now. Uh, back-to-back top fives. He's not leading laps, but he's, you know, baby steps. Um, now, he hasn't led a lap here since his first two appearances, uh, which is kind of strange. He had two first two appearances, top fives. Since then, no top fives, last 11. He's only led 89 laps here in 13 races, so eh, not that great. Uh, all top all top tens in Xfinity series. That's five of them. Three top fives and a win. So he's had success in the Xfinity series. He's shown success here. He's never won. Um, he's not dominated. Uh, uh, so I like him. 
but I, he, but so if I'm going to take him, I'm taking him here. Just, I just can't take him if he qualifies well and those odds drop to eight to one or something. So I'm, I'd much rather take him at fourteen to one. And Chastain never really did much here until last year when he was runner up. Now again, he's never led laps here. He's at two out of seven. But again, we have a Chevy runner up last year. That's why, and the odds are fourteen. So I like Elliott better. Um, I don't, I don't like these guys like I like Bell and Blaney, but they're like the next kind of group that I like based on the odds. Yeah, I think Elliott's going to be pretty um, reliable compared to a Chastain. I think Chastain could probably come out and score a top five, and maybe even contend for the win. But like you said, he's only done that once so far, and that. And was by the high. way, where was it? <clears throat> Las Vegas. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> so there, so so it's a, it's a little tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny something. Yeah, so. very true. Um, yeah, like you said, two laps led, so it wouldn't be surprising to see Chastain come out and 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 score something really good this weekend. But I, I think um, from a reliability standpoint, here as we're looking at Tuesday, uh, I like Elliott better just because he's got the better history. He's a little bit more reliable over more races. Thirteen, he's been up there at the front inside the top ten for a significant portion. And if you look at, you know, kind of, he hasn't been great here with the new car, uh, but that's when he did lead laps. He, he led 44 laps in 2022 before crashing out. Um, so this weekend could be good. He's got a lot of momentum on his side. Like that I think as long as this team continues to show what they showed the past couple of weeks, uh, even with the Martinsville finish, even though he slipped back behind Larson at the end there, I think uh, Elliott's due for a win shortly, and that would end a, more than a season's year's worth of uh, – winless streak there by the way uh now that i'm looking at it i think we have the answer to some of the reasons why the odds are the way they are larson's win las vegas mm. reddick second las vegas so i think they're taking what happened at the other 1.5 mile track uh, but again it's not as similar so that's the thing that if they are doing that then I think you should take advantage of that because I think that's too much. I wouldn't I wouldn't push these guys in that spot just based on Las Vegas. So I completely but. agree. This track is very different. It's even different than Charlotte because they've reduced the banking in turns one and two. So you have to run a different line in turns one and two at Texas than you do in three and four. The banking is significantly steeper. It's a different configuration. Just because you're fast at Las Vegas does not mean you're going to be fast at Texas. Yeah, 1.5 mile ovals tend to race similarly, but this is very much a different track compared to Las Vegas. All right. Now let's get to the 16 to one shots. Gibbs and Wallace. Uh, I don't see Gibbs this week. Um, you know, he, I, I haven't seen much both Xfinity and uh, Cup for me to say, yeah, this is the week to go with Gibbs. And for Wallace, though, um, you know, you don't usually get Bubba outside of, uh, you know, Atlanta or Daytona at, at this number, at 16 to 1. But that worries me a little bit because he's not usually down this uh, point. But I, but we understand why. Because um, he's coming off a solid showing last week. Uh, he was on the pole here last year, led 111 laps, finished third. So that's as good as it gets for Wallace on, on one of these types of tracks. So, yeah, all of that's nice. I still like a little bit more odds, but, you know, because and I don't know how much more he'd drop. I guess he could because I've looked at the, the odds and I even though he's qualified well, like the last week or two, I, I, I haven't seen the odds drop that much. So I'm not too worried about being patient with Wallace and waiting until qualifying to see if he's, he's it, just see how he reacts, because I don't think you're going to lose many points, even if he does well at qualifying. Yeah, and if you look at his average start here, it, it's 16.3. Um, I think he only had one top 10 start before he ended up uh, getting that pull last year at this track. Ended up leading 111 laps, finished third. Uh, Wallace, <clears throat> I think, is a decent uh, pick at this price. Like you, I, I, I don't think he's going to drop very much, so maybe worth waiting to see. For me, he's kind of, I put him in the same bucket as a Chastain, like just recently showing some kind of success at this track. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him come out and be competitive and be inside the top 10, but there is a lot of uncertainty around him. For him, you might as well wait. I, I think uh, from a, if you get Chastain qualifying on pole, you'll probably see his odds drop a lot further than somebody like Wallace qualifying inside the top 10. All right, now the two... Uh... 
at surprisingly big odds, Bush at 18 and Logano at 20. I, I Out of the two, even though Kyle's got the Chevy, I'm taking Logano. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no question. Yeah. Uh, second, um, not too long ago, um, Kyle Busch, unfortunately, is off to a bad start, as we said. And matter of fact, on this track with the new car, 34th, 36th. Uh, and that's even though he's won four times here and has an average of 12.3. Hasn't worked with the new car, Logano. Um, it has uh, second and twenty first with the new car, and this year the last two races sixth and second. So one driver is heating up, the other is not. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. And and now's a good time to take Logano too. That that's a, that's a healthy, healthy number right now. Absolutely, I think you got to jump on Logano. I think um, Penske and Penske Fords have been fast at this track, and, and it's been pretty consistent. They may not have made it into victory lane recently, as we talked about earlier, uh, but certainly if Logano comes out and, and all the Penskes come out, um, at least two of them, Cindric probably won't, but Cindric's been qualifying well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, but if Logano and Blaney qualify up front, I think their odds are going to drop tremendously, and Logano at that price is well worth taking here on the uh, Texas, where he has actually been very good, finished second in 2022, leading 15 laps. All right, now we got Bowman at 22, Busher 28, Kozlowski 28, and Bowman, um, he's got a couple of top fives, nothing special. His average is pretty bad, it's almost 24th. But his last four races this year, three top tens, two top fives, nothing outside the top 20, and he's a Chevy. And he, it's, look, I, I prefer the 25, 30 we've been getting, but 22, it's okay. I mean, I still much rather have Logano than Bowman around this number. But, you know, Bowman, because he's driving a Chevy and the way he's driving, take it into consideration. Maybe because Bowman could do these things. He could steal a win on Sunday and it would not surprise us. Um, that's how he wins races most of the time. Um, Busher and Kozlowski, though, Busher, it's a hard pass. This is not a good track for Busher. And for Kozlowski, you know, it's one of those things where you take a look at his history, you know, before last year and all that. And even when he was with Penske at the time, never won here. Um, but his last five results here, he has a 6.8 average. So that's the thing. It's not like he's had a lot of uh, laps led or anything like that. But his results are good. So fantasy-wise, he's probably a really good play, nice little underdog play to get into the top 10 or maybe even the top five. But I don't know about winning. The good news is you're getting 28 to one. Yeah, completely agree with that. I think Busher, um, interestingly, only has two top 15 finishes here, no top 10s. Last year was his best finish at this track, a 14th place, and he started on the front row that day. So maybe this team's getting the one lap speed, a couple of short run speed, um, things going their way. They certainly haven't been able to figure it out over an entire race distance, maybe even a fuel distance. So uh, I agree with you. I think of, of this bunch, if there's anybody that I'm going to take, it's going to be Bowman. I think uh, as long as he stays and hovers around the top 10, like you said, <clears throat> He's going to sneak a win out and it's going to, everybody's going to be like, where did he come from? Yeah. And you and I are going to be sitting here saying he does that all the time. That's right. <laughs> Told you. All right. Uh, next we have, we go to the long shot. So out of all these long shots, um, the, the one that sticks out to me, the only one actually is Jones um, because a couple of things. He's starting to race better. He's got 12th and 14th his last two results, which actually, considering the starting it off to, is pretty good. But if you look at it, uh, three top fives out of 12 in his career in the Cup. He's got a truck win in 2015. In the Xfinity Series, he has been in this uh, track six times. All top fives, runner-up, three wins. He's led 368 laps. And his average finish, 2.2. Now, that's the Xfinity Series, but still, it shows you that this has been a good track for Jones over his career, one of his best. And that's why if I'm taking a long shot, I'm taking Eric Jones. Seven top 10s out of 12 in the Cup Series, three top fives out of 12 in the Cup Series at this track alone, 116 laps led and 12 tries. Uh, I think Eric Jones, I've been saying it almost every single week. He's somebody that you got to keep an eye on this season. I think this team has made significant progress over the winter. They just haven't 
fully been able to get it every single week. I think what you are looking at in Eric Jones and this team is a consistent top 15 finisher. <clears throat> and if you can do that throughout the entire season, you're going to be in the playoff hunt, whether you have a winner or not. Um, and if you look at just Jones's results, 12th and 14th, Martinsville and Richmond, <clears throat> The only other time he had a top 15 so far this year was at Las Vegas, the other 1.5 mile oval. So I completely agree. I, I think from a long shot perspective, this is a great track for Jones. I think they've got the consistency on a week to week basis there and they've had the speed all season. They just haven't had the luck and the execution to go along with it, but they've got that the past two weeks. So I'm not afraid of going with Jones this week yet again. All right. And uh, just some quick notes before we wrap up on the other long shots. Suarez has been pretty decent here. Uh, last three, eighth, twelfth, and tenth, um, but not going all that well overall uh, in his last three in the series. Um, and then I also want to mention Nima Check, first cup, I believe this is his first cup uh, race here. Five top tens had a six in Xfinity series, four top fives, two wins, and a truck win in 21. Uh, Sindrick has an average of 4.9 in the Xfinity series with a win uh, out of eight races there. And then uh, you also have Hosevar. Uh, he's got a truck win here last year. Uh, Noah Gregson uh, has three top fives and a win in eight Xfinity series races. His win was 2022. Austin Dillon has a cup win in 2020. And Harrison Burton has an Xfinity series win in 2020. But... Um, like, like I said, and I think maybe you agree with me, Eric Jones is the real only long shot to, you know, use your money on. By the way, Briscoe could be interesting just because um, I like the odds at 80 to 1. Um, he's got a runner-up in a pole in Xfinity Series and in three cup races, 10th, 5th, and 15th, which is not all that bad. He's racing much better this year, including 10th last week. Yeah, I mean, honestly, of that bunch, Chase Briscoe is probably going to be the one you want to go with. Uh, he hasn't finished worse than 15th. Granted, he's only got three Texas starts, but he was 5th and 10th the last two times here. Hasn't led a lap, uh, but I mean, just three races at a track. All three of them are top 15s. The last two are uh, top five and the top 10. Uh, Briscoe, has, he's not slow. <laughs> I, 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 think he can, I think he can be competitive, and I think he's going to... I think he's capable of a top 10 this week. Maybe top five is a stretch, but if things, you know, fall fall his way, maybe late caution or whatever, uh, if he's able to be there in contention, regardless of where he starts, I think he's going to be somebody that's going to be in there. Yeah, we expect for sure. We expected Briscoe to have um, a, a big year last year, and it didn't happen. And so I think what's important to note is that Stuart Haas has gone through so many changes the last few years that he's like the man now. And it's crazy to think that, but I think that's a good thing. They know at this point this year, the team knows, you know, this is our best chance this year. And so he's going to get all the good stuff. And so far, I think we're seeing it. I, I think Chase has got to win. win. I, I, think he's, I think he's potentially a playoff driver this year. Would not surprise me to see him get a win. Uh, I, I think he's been pretty consistent despite that, but, but you know, despite the perception, but... Um, very quiet at doing it. Um, I, I mean, remember last year started off extremely strongly, uh, but then ended up getting that penalty and that kind of thwarted his season until the very end. It took him almost the entire year to recover, uh, but they're, they're kind of back to where they were before. Maybe just maybe half a step behind where they were at the start of last season. So uh, finished 10th um, here at, at Texas last year, and that was in the fall. That was the 30th race of, of the season. So it's a different point in the season. He's still got momentum on his side early. Uh, so I do think Chase Briscoe might be a very good long shot. All right, let's go with our picks. And I'll go, uh, again, these just picks based on nothing other than what I see probably taking place. I mean, I'll say, because uh, I have Bell and Blaney in my top three, I definitely have to throw one of the big Chevys in there. So I will go with Larson. So I'll go Larson, Blaney, Bell, and then Logano and Jones are the obvious long shots. I think you agree with me there. I think you agree with me uh, at least on a few of these. So how are you going to do it? Yeah, from a uh, top three, I'm actually just going to go down the, the point standings <laughs> and I'm going to go Hamlin, Larson, and Bell. 
Um, I just think Hamlin's been awfully close recently. I think it's worth taking somebody that's not a Chevy. Um, Larson of the Chevys, you know, from an odds perspective, terrible. You don't want to go with four to one. Uh, but from a competitive standpoint and momentum standpoint, he's there. Uh, but then certainly from all around choices, I, I think Bell certainly from from the top there. And your long shots, same? From a, Yeah, from a long shot perspective, um, Jones. Um, and then why not? I, I put Briscoe as my long, long shot. Like it. All right. So Briscoe and Jones as a couple of long shots. Uh, but they're both getting big money. I think they're both getting 80 to 1. So, yeah, both getting 80 to 1. So get it now before qualifying. All right, sounds good. CJ, appreciate it. Next week, we'll be talking also about F1, and they're in China, right? They are going to China after for another Max Verstappen show uh, before heading to Miami for yet another Max Verstappen show the first weekend in May. <laughs> Lots to talk yeah. about. China. Week, yeah. All right, and then Talladega next week. So we'll talk about China and the F1, Talladega in NASCAR. Uh, Dover will end the month, I believe, on NASCAR. So uh, that's what's coming up here. Um, and uh, how long do we have before the Indy 500? End of May. So we'll probably get uh, the Grand Prix of uh, Indianapolis here probably in another, what, two, three weeks? What is it? May oh, it's still early February. It's early. Or April. Sorry. April. Yeah. <laughs> we have another month to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm see behind. And by the way, we'll have, of course, a link in the description for your report, your NASCAR report. So you can check that out. Uh, and that comes out when, CJ? Uh, that'll be out probably on Friday this week ahead of uh, Texas. We'll give you the DFS daily fantasy sports preview. So I'll have all my picks in there from a high risk lineup perspective as well as a low risk perspective. All right. Sounds cool. All right, CJ. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week. Sounds good. Thank you.